vocational education is hereby called to order. We would like to uh, acknowledge, first things first, our uh, colleagues present here today. We have with us Senator Sa Aimee Marcos, Senator um, Nancy Binay, and Senator Pia Cayetano. Thank you for joining us, dear colleagues. Good morning. And uh, we apologize for the delay. There was an accident outside. Um, we also would like to acknowledge Congresswoman Lorna Silverio from uh, the great province of Bulacan, <laughs> Tita Lorna, and uh, of course, Congresswoman uh, Christine Singson uh, Mehan. Thank you for uh, joining uh, for joining us. We also have with us Chairman uh, Popoy De Vera of the Commission on Higher Education. And uh, we would like to uh, acknowledge our ComSec to uh, uh, to recognize our distinguished guests and resource persons uh, today. Can you turn on your mic? Thank you, Mr. Chair. From the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, PASO, Dr. Tirso Ronquillo, President, and Attorney Los Biminda R. Rosales. From the Coordinating Council of Private Educational Associations, COCOPEA, Attorney Joseph Noel Estrada, Managing Director. Association of Local Colleges and Universities, ALCU, Dr. Rene M. Colocar, President. From the Association of Local Colleges and Universities Commission, ALCOCOA, Dr. Raymond Raimundo P. Arcega, President and Executive Director. From the Department of Budget and Management, Director Gerald Handa, Organization Position, Classification, Compensation Bureau, DBM. For House Bill 8111, Dr. Jameson H. Stan, President, Bulacan Agricultural State College. And for House Bill 8188, Dr. Gilbert Arce, President, Ilocosur Polytechnic State College. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Comsec. Again, uh, good morning. Let me just uh, give a short uh, opening statement. We are here this Monday morning to uh, deliberate on Senate Bill Number 1744 or the Revised Higher Education Act, House Bill Number 8111, and Senate Bill Number 2106, converting into a state university, the Bulacan Agricultural State College in my home province in Bulacan, and House Bill Number 8188, the uh, Senate Bill Number and Senate Bill Number 2120, also converting into a state university, the Ilocos Sur Polytechnic State College in Santa Maria, Ilocos Sur, and all its campuses. Before I give uh, some remarks on the pet bill of uh, Chairman Popoy de Vera, let me uh, comment briefly on the two conversion bills mentioned above, of which Bulacan 3rd District Representative uh, Congresswoman Lorna Silverio, Ilocos uh, Sur Congresswoman Christine Singson Mihan, and our colleague Senator Manang Aimi are uh, the primary authors. Like the other local bills that had gone through the scrutiny of this committee, we support the proposed measures at hand because we believe that they can enhance the value proposition of our public colleges. We also joined the Commission on Higher Education in its consistent position that the operational requirements for a university must be duly complied with before granting a university status. These prerequisite operational requirements reflect the need to strengthen the capability of CHEDS to establish and enforce educational policies and standards, which at present is really a challenge for the Commission, since implementation functions have not been the goal when uh, RA 7722 was passed into a law. Consequently, implementation functions become real challenges for the Commission, hence the necessity for a revised Higher Education Act. We will also tackle this afternoon the proposed joint resolution number 10. This proposed joint resolution seeks to create a congressional oversight committee on education to study and assess Philippine education. It will be on the uh, uh, with, with the Senator Gachalian's committee, committee on uh, basic education. We revisited the final report of the EDCOM, especially on the rationale for the establishment of the CHED in preparation for today. And let me just quote part of it. The Commission on Higher Education, CHED, a collegial body, will have programming and coordinative rather than administrative responsibility 
over higher education programs and institutions. Higher education institutions, both public and private, will enjoy autonomy in curricular matters and in determining the academic requirements, admission charges, the professional competence of students, and research priorities, end of quote. Unfortunately, and I would agree with the Chairman De Vera, the Commission had to absorb more and more mandates as Congress passed more measures affecting higher education in the country. Just for the past eight years, more or less a dozen laws have been enacted, increasing the implementation mandates of the CHED. And I can see uh, Chairman Popoy nodding his head. A perfect example that significantly increased the implementation responsibilities of the Commission would be the enactment of Republic Act Number 10931 or the free tuition law. Another example is how the increase in the number of state universities and colleges and local universities and colleges in the country drains the human and other resources of the CHED. I am not sure if this is if this accurately um, captures what the good uh, CHED chairperson has in mind. May dagdag na trabaho, pero walang dagdag na makinarya. May dagdag na mandato, pero didiretsohin ko na po na dahil nandito naman ng DBM, kulang sa tao at pasweldo. We are blessed indeed because uh, Chairman De Vera is uh, the one advocating for this measure and I'm aware of his decades of work in reforming the country's higher education sector, both as a practitioner and uh, part of the academe before joining the commission and as a public policy expert himself. We reiterate our full support to the bill, being the only principal author of the measure here in the Senate. But we seek clarity, uh, and let me point this out, clarity on um, two pertinent issues arising from this proposal, which we believe will also, be, uh, uh, will also concern our colleagues once we report this out in the plenary. First, how can we justify this bill amid government streamlining efforts? This piece of legislation will provide for provincial CHED field offices. We want to know the additional human resource and budgetary requirements that the Commission will need should this bill passes into law. Alam ko po na isa ito sa mga punot dulo ng panukala, pero maganda po ngayon pa lamang, uh, Chairman Popoy, eh, makuwenta na natin at uh, makapagbigay tayo ng uh, ballpark figure as to how much do we need in uh, implementing uh, this measure at uh, nandiyan naman yung DBM, ihingi rin tayo ng guidance sa kanila. Secondly, and lastly, how will this measure resolve the problems of coordination in the education sector? Lagi talk si Sen Aimi, Sen Pia, Sen uh, 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 Nancy, lagi namin napag-uusapan dito yung importance of coordination with the three education uh, uh, institutions natin. No? We are aware of our backlogs in the Philippine Qualifications Framework, the Ladderized Education Program, and the Teacher Education Council, among others. Um, and again, it boils down uh, to the lackluster coordination in the education sector. My apprehension lies in this, uh, Your Honors. If we strengthen individual educational agencies, TESDA, by the way, is asking that they be converted into a department. Um, again, will it become detrimental to, uh, to seamless coordination and collaboration among uh, the education agencies? Will it encourage each agency uh, all the more to work in uh, silos? Uh, we must improve our mandates as individual government agencies, but uh, remember that the trifocalized training and education sector is designed in the context of a collaborative uh, governance uh, regime as a single and uh, unified education sector. Kasi po kung mas palalakasin natin yung kapangyarihan ng CHED at isama na rin natin kung ang TESDA magiging uh, departamento, eh hindi ba lalong magsasarili ang mga ito sa halip na palakasin ang coordination para mas seamless at hindi fragmented ang ating educational policies. As we move forward, formulating this piece of legis legislation, we must identify and uh, uh, incorporate elements, facets, and uh, loci of collaboration. We must ascertain that uh, while strengthening each education agency, we also ensure that cooperation remains the prevailing pattern of uh, attitude and behavior within the trifocalized education sector. I'm confident that ours will be a fruitful and lively discussion this morning. 
our guests this morning are at the doorsteps of their uh, respective colleges and universities uh, day in and day out. They are in the best position to brief us on the actual situation on the ground. So the timing could not have been uh, more perfect as the higher education sector faces significant challenges and uncertainties amid this uh, pandemic. I believe that Se Senate Bill Number 17 44 will facilitate a radical opening of pathways to career success among our youth and aid in the transformation of higher education with technology at its course. Muli, maraming salamat at uh, pagpalain po tayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. May I uh, acknowledge our dear colleagues who may want to uh, give uh, their opening statements, Senator Nancy, Senator Pia, Senator Aimee. Yes, uh, if uh, the, no one if no one is uh, going ahead, I, if I may. Please, please, Senator Aini, you're recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, um, I uh, just would like uh, the uh, coll our colleagues to please support both the uh, Bulacan State as well as the Ilocos Sur Polytechnic efforts, uh, which I co-authored with the representatives from the House. Meanwhile, with regard to uh, our chairman's effort, both our chairman in the committee as well as Chairman Pop De Vera, regarding uh, the Revised Higher Education Act, may I uh, extend full support um, given the, uh, the uh, crisis in uh, education today between the K-12, the universal free tuition, uh, the uh, pandemic that has struck all sectors, but education in particular and uh, in uh, especially difficult ways. And finally, the uh, tax, which we uh, discussed um, and will rationalize very shortly. According to Section 8, the Commission has set guidelines for reasonable increases in tuition and other fees through its regional offices, the Commission can strictly monitor compliance with said guidelines. Can it be possible that the Commission also set guidelines for reasonable decreases in tuition and other fees? Is there such a thing? So uh, I'm very, very concerned about uh, this um, uh, power to set tuition guidelines, increases, and what do we define as reasonable increases? Are there decreases? Do we have data on the transfer of students from private HEIs to SUCs? Due to the decrease in costs brought about by digital learning and homeschooling, is it safe to conclude that uh, everyone will also decrease their tuition and other school expenses? Uh, the uh, thorny issue of the admission of foreigners in, um, in our um, SUC should also be dealt with in um, conjunction with this um, section, given that many schools uh, actually rely on the income derived from foreign students. But certainly, it is not our purpose for the Philippine government to support the education of non-Filipinos. They should be charged well and fully. And also, I am concerned with, in addition to Section 8P, Section 8R, um, the Commission will conduct mediation, conciliation, et cetera, et cetera, between HEIs and students, teachers, and staff involving academic issues. Once again, the argument will revolve upon the definition of academic. May we be clarified and uh, uh, may we reach mutual understanding on the definition of academic that has in the past resulted in many controversies. So uh, the sanctions further, there is no mention of sanctions against uh, 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 board members, against the officials, as well as uh, the others involved in these controversies. Finally, may we be updated, as the chairman has already mentioned, the budget involved in providing field offices for CHED. May we be updated on the status of the trust fund created under Republic Act 7722. During the pandemic, was this trust fund utilized? Were there special programs or instances during which the trust fund helped or was of timely assistance to our HUIs? How much remains? Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Senator Aimee. Before we acknowledge uh, 
Chairman Popoy, I'm sure the, our uh, uh, friends from CHED are all uh, taking notes of uh, the issues that we are uh, raising here. But uh, perhaps if we could uh, hear also from uh, our dear colleagues, Senator Pia, Senator Nancy. If, uh, yes, Senator Pia, our, uh, one of our education champions here in the Senate. Senator Pia Cayetano, you're recognized, ma'am. Hello, thank you. Good morning, um, Chairman, and good morning to our colleagues in the House. Good morning, uh, Chair Popoy, and all our other um, stakeholders. Um, I, yeah, I do have a few comments to make. Unfortunately, I can't stay for the duration of the hearing as I have a pre-scheduled appointment here. I'm, I'm in Baguio, if you can look at my background and appreciate it. Nanginggit ka pa, ate ah. Oo, siya. Totoo. Totoo yan. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, see, um, I'm, I'm with my brother and uh, I think, I don't know kung aabutin ko, but uh, may meeting kasi kami with um, some uh, SUCs actually. Anyway, um, but I do want to share the concerns raised by the chair. I, I'm looking forward to the discussion on the, um, the uh, uh, higher education uh, bill that his honor filed. Um, I really support that we look into it and uh, consider, highly consider budgetary support um, prior to, to Chair Popoy's um, becoming the chairperson in the previous administration. I, I was the chairman of the Senate Committee on Education and that's when we passed um, uh, the bill creating UNIFAS. No? And doon pa lang, there was already a lot of concerns on the ability. Well, you, you, you're familiar with this, Joel. No? We've had discussions on this. On the ability, on, 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 um, I, I, I'm not appreciative of our dumping on, on uh, government agencies these two times and not giving them corresponding support. And at that time, and it, it happens a lot in the interest of passing an important measure to follow yon. So I believe yung sa UNIFAS na, ano, no, Chair Popoy, di ba, na address na yan, di ba? So may funding. I, I know that we've covered that. But again, because I am the one who handles the budget, uh, the entire uh, education budget uh, in the Senate, that's very important to me because I'd like this to be rolled out properly. So I will fully support uh, the request, um, of course, subject to our, our looking into the details. Um, but I totally support the request for this. There's so much um, being put in the hands of CHED and we want them to do their job properly. And we can't expect that if we, go, we don't do give them budgetary support. So I truly support that, Mr. Chair. I also support your um, uh, observation that are we heading in the right direction um, with this measure that we have. I, I appreciate that uh, even though it's your measure and that's how I approach my bills also, I want, I genuinely want the input to see if, you know, this is what we need to do or do we need to do a bit of a 45 degree turn because I, I totally agree. You strengthen one institution, in a way, make corresponding weakening yon of other institutions. So how do we really address this? And um, I actually haven't read the 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 World Bank um, report in detail, but I'm simply reacting to Malacanang's concern, uh, expressing. Ilan ba to? Oh, July one. Malacanang's concern expressing. The, the report of World Bank that minimum proficiency level. Okay, kaya lang ba tayo babalik sa school? Eh, yung mga, yung mga yung colleges na nabisita ko sa mga probi probinsya and, and I've put this on record in the elementary level in far-flung areas, the children, the children uh, play together, they're holding hands, they're walking around together as if there's no COVID, they don't have any mask. Well, di ba hindi nilang pag-aralin? Now, that's for children. Lalo naman sa college, di ba? Nakakaintindi naman yun. Problema lang natin yung mag-boyfriend. O yun na lang yung ano nyo, di ba? No PDA. P meaning public and private. Kasi nga, delikado. But other than that, can they freaking be in school? So, Mr. Chair, I think that should part of the discussion like i said unfortunately i can't stay long but i really support that we open up this discussion because we're not getting any closer to improving the quality of education without you know discuss elephant in the room that uh, the the children have no the children and the youth no the young people have no contact have no direct contact with their teachers and even those who are privileged to have that kind of contact because they have internet 
it's still it's still very different. So I can go on and on, but the the purpose is to really listen to our experts. But um, I'll I'll join you between today and the next few days to really look into this. Thank you. And the budget budget it's important to me because this is already like preliminary for my own work that I have to do on the budget. Thank you. Sorry, Thank sorry, you, Thank Mr. You. Chair. Sorry, one more thing. Um, I, I need to put on record also, and this is not specifically um, uh, directed at the bills, the local bills on the table now. No, that's all. I haven't even seen it. So in the end, but I want to put on record. Uh, if you will recall the headache we went through a few weeks ago uh, with the, in the health, health, the local health bills. Uh, support. I support. Mr. Chair, it was you know who made that that statement. No, na we need to be sure that the requirements are met. Because so masakit yung ulo namin. And when I was chairperson, talagang I put my my foot down. No, ano naman? No um no favoritism. No 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 offense taken. Please, sa mga um colleagues natin uh in the local government, we fully support the intention. Pero without the the requirements being complete, um. Ang hirap talaga. We we erode, no? We erode uh, the standards that uh, Ched is trying to set, and we also uh, limit our ability to to also promote those standards even within our own levels. If ito pwede, ito pagbigyan. So yun lang. I feel strongly about it. Again, that's nothing to do with the bills on the floor now. Nothing. I don't know them. I just want that officially on record as my as my position. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you again, uh, Senator Pia. Thank you for your uh, valuable inputs. And uh, I'd like to uh, share your sentiment, uh, especially with regard to uh, budgetary requirements. I remember when we passed Dr. Para sa Bayan Law, without you supporting it and without you defending the budget last year, we would not have this 800 plus uh, million budget to uh, start the ball rolling. And uh, remember, we have that uh, uh, intention to put up uh, college of medicine in each and every region of the country in the next five years and that's why it's 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 a uh, very challenging and we are glad that uh, you're handling the budget of the uh, uh, commission on higher education thank you uh, senator pia and uh, let me also state for the record that uh, again despite the fact that we filed the measure we are open to suggestions we are looking at this with the open uh, mind and uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, this will work and this is for uh, the best interest of our uh, people, especially of the sector. Uh, we, moving forward, we'd like to hear from, uh, uh, if, if Senator Nancy Binay would like to make a preliminary statement, opening statement. Senator uh, Nancy, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hindi na po ako magbibigay ng opening statement dahil alam ko napakahaba ng uh, ating tatalakay ngayong umanggaw. We can already proceed, Mr. Chairman. Sige, maraming salamat, uh, Senator Nancy. Uh, uh, with your indulgence, uh, Chair Popoy, let, let me acknowledge our uh, uh, two uh, count, uh, members of the uh, uh, House of Representatives. We have with us uh, uh, Representative Lorna Silverio from our uh, province, um, the great province of Bulacan. Ma'am, you're recognized if you want to make a statement and uh, give your opening statement. Uh, Congresswoman Lorna Silverio. You're, you're, you're muted, uh, ma'am. Ayan po. We can hear you now, ma'am. Okay, now. Thank you. Okay. Yes, you're recognized, uh, Congresswoman. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman of, the, uh, of this committee, Senator Joel Michael Paya, and of course the members, uh, my uh, my friends in the, the Senate, Senator Imi, Senator Binay, Senator uh, Pia. You know, uh, Senator Aimee and Senator Bia have their hearts in uh, Bulacan. So I'm sure they are very supportive of this uh, of this bill of mine. Uh, staff and fellow public... Senator support. Nancy is from your district, uh, Congresswoman. Senator Nancy oh, Bina from, is from your from, district. Oh <laughs> from the new district now. <laughs> okay. Of course, of course. So, yeah, thank you. So this humble representation would like to express its gratitude to the chairman for uh, hearing the call of our fellow Bulacanos, most especially in the third district for which I represent, 
for prioritizing this measure, which can encourage our younger generation to focus more on agriculture and food security. The Bulacan Agricultural State College, also known as BASI, is a 69-year-old state-funded institution situated in Barangay Pinaod, San Aldefonso, Bulacan. It started as an agricultural high school in 1952 and was converted into a chartered state college in 1998 through Republic Act 854A. For the long years, it has served the community with its provision of excellent education and quality service. BASI, with earnest hope, is primed to become a university and be recognized as Bulacan State Agricultural University, predicated on its virtue and merits. This is mirrored by the areas of quality assurance it undertakes on accreditation. CHED Institutional Sustainability Assessment, or ESA, and International Standard Standardization for Organization, ISO. Uh, BASI continually ensures that mechanisms and procedures are in place to meet the desired quality and in instruction, research, extension, and development. On the area of, in of instruction, BASI offers quality education through the relevant academic systems, policies, and processes it implements. It provides programs with responsive in agriculture progress and allied disciplines, which are regularly subjected to achieve the highest possible accreditation level. In line to this, the college also aims for the achievement of the center of excellence level in agriculture. Through this pursuit of academic excellence, BASI is capably prepared to cater more to, to cater to more than 4,000 students from the different parts of Bulacan and nearby provinces. In terms of the research, extension, and training programs, BASI contributes to societal progress by producing rele relevant RDE programs that are utilized for development and application to the community. Research undertakings of faculty members across all academic ranks has reached 80% for internally funded researches in the last years, whereas a growing percentage of 38% have conducted externally funded researches in the last three years. Meanwhile, the extension endeavors of BASI designed to increase productivity, improve community welfare, and increase citizen engagement are continually conducted with local government units as partners. In other aspects, the BASI has highly developed its infrastructure and overall physical plan through the generally increasing financial capacity of the college over the years. Funding support from various partner agencies and government institutions enabled for major construction projects, provision of laboratory facilities, and proposals for campus development. Recently, the college has been granted funding support worth millions for the establishment of agricultural centers such as Wine Multiplier and Technodemo Farm and Food Innovation Center. Generally, the conversion of BASI into a state university will have greater impact in the advancement of higher education and professional development of students seeking technical instruction and training in the field of agriculture and related programs. Consequently, this will be seen as an important contributor to the province's uh, economic state. It shall also further strengthen the functions of a higher education institution in terms of instruction, research, extension, and production. Likewise, this will provide more opportunities and prospects to competent teaching workforce and personnel. Investing in higher and more advanced education will have a significant impact to the development of a nation. BASI is transformative in nature and is now equipped to make further difference in the community. Having said that, I leave it to the wisdom of the committee to discuss the finer points of this measure and hopefully further upgrading the status of this valuable academic institution in the province of Bulacan. So thank you, Mr. Chairman and my dear colleague, and a pleasant good morning to everyone.
Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman uh, Lorna Silverio. We uh, would like to hear now uh, Congresswoman uh, Christine Singson uh, Mihan. Pam, you're recognized. Yes, um, a pleasant Monday morning to the chairperson, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva. Thank you po for taking up House Bill 8188. To Senator Amy Marcos, thank you for sponsoring the counterpart Senate Bill 2120. And also to the members of this committee, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Pia Cayetano, Chairman Popoy De Vera, thank you po for your time and all guests that are here today. I'm honored to be here this morning to sponsor House Bill 8188. My father, former Deputy Speaker Eric Singson, is the primary author of the laws which converted both ISPSC and NLFASC into state colleges with the vision of converting them into a state university and the hope of transforming them into centers for excellence, development, and research. The integration of the state colleges would make this more achievable and would consolidate the resources of the government. And it is also salutary to the Philippine higher education reform agenda, wherein one important component is amalgamation. The locations of the many campuses of ISPSC and NLPSC that are spread all over the second district would make the future university easily accessible to everyone, including the indigenous people from the upland areas of Ilocosur and those from the nearby municipalities of the Cordillera Administrative Region. It is imperative that everyone, especially the youth, should be given the chance to develop and improve so that they could contribute to the overall competitiveness of our country. If these measures approved, the people of the second district of Ilocosur and its surrounding areas would have their very own state university, something that they are so rightly deserve. It is in this light that I humbly request the passage of this measure. Thank you, Paul Salahat. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Congresswoman uh, Singson Mihan. Um, this juncture, we will uh, give the floor to uh, the man of the hour, our chairperson of the uh, Commission on Higher Education, Chairman Popoy de Vera. Sir, good morning, and uh, you're recognized. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Uh, chairman, uh, as far as uh, Senate Bill uh, uh, 2106 um, and uh, House Bills uh, 8111 and 8111 8 and 8188 uh, 8 and Senate Bill uh, 2120. The uh, position of the Commission has been consistent as we manifested in the House of Representatives. There are many conversion bills that have been passed into law and are pending with the CHED now for evaluation. Recently, we, uh, the Commission and Bank approved the uh, compliance of uh, Cotabato State Polytechnic College, uh, Mindoro State University, uh, Sosogon State University and uh, one more in Sambuanga because they have fully complied with all the requirements for quality assurance. Uh, what we have been doing since uh, I took over Mr. Chair is to do a very thorough assessment of the uh, situation of the universities and bring this uh, compliance report to the Board of Regents of the university so they will know and uh, especially the actions that are needed by the board uh, for conversion. We also brief the uh, respective legislators who are championing these bills in the House Committee on Higher and Technical Education on the compliance requirements and we have been doing our best to assist the universities uh, comply. I think that is the major difference that we have undertaken under this administration. We proactively work with the university, with our legislators, and with the boards of the SOOCs so that uh, the university can comply. There is a trend that is easily observable among the state colleges that want to be converted into state universities. The weakest areas have been 
Uh, number one, in the graduate programs, particularly in the uh, doctoral programs that they offer. Number two, in the faculty, particular of, particularly the credentials of faculty members in terms of having the relevant degrees, professional licenses, or relevant experience in the subject areas they handle. The faculty members who teach in the doctoral programs must have doctoral degrees. And in the research undertaken by the, uh, uh, by the professors in the university. These are the consistently weak areas in compliance uh, some of the other SOCs have problems in terms of having the necessary equipment that is needed for their laboratories, their library uh, uh, holdings, etc. And so what we do in the commission is to alert our legislators so that they can assist and find funding for laboratories, for libraries, uh, for infrastructure that is needed by the university and on the part of the Board of Regents on their actions on hiring of faculty members, uh, sending their faculty members to graduate school so that they can get the necessary uh, degrees. So we have, uh, for example, Mr. Chair, done a, uh, done a ref review of the uh, Bulacan uh, Agricultural State College. I am familiar with the school. I have been there personally. Uh, several months ago, and in the preliminary evaluation of the regional office of CHED, uh, there is a list of uh, compliance issues that have not been uh, uh, achieved, for example, in terms of their doctoral program, not having the necessary three different fields of study. Their faculty members teaching doctoral degrees, not all their faculty members teaching in the doctoral program have doctoral degrees. In the compliance for faculty requirements, having the, having the necessary degrees, for example, compliance with the civil service requirement that all faculty members must have a master's degree to become permanent uh, faculty members in their universities. And in terms of the faculty members who are engaged in research, and who publish in journals, uh, who publish books, and who uh, develop research patents. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we, uh, we do not object uh, or we do not oppose the conversion so long as it is clear in the, uh, in the bill and in the Republic Act, if it is signed by the president, that there must be compliance with CHED standards. I have submitted, Mr. Chair, a, uh, an amendment, uh, an appropriate section that should be incorporated in all conversion bills. I have submitted that to your office previously, and we request that that be put in the conversion bills if this is passed by the Senate, uh, so that uh, we are sure that uh, there is quality assurance in uh, and uh, academic standards observed in these uh, universities. As far as the Ilocos Sur State Polytechnic uh, uh, Polytechnic uh, State College is concerned, we we have an additional Ilocos Sur State Polytechnic and the North Luzon Philippine State College into one state university uh, because uh, there are already three uh, SOCs in uh, Ilocos, uh, Ilocos Sur and it would be good to uh, uh, amalgamate the two into one. Uh, those are our general comments, uh, Mr. Chair, as far as the conversion of Bulacan Agricultural State College and Ilocos Sur Polytechnic State College is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Popoy. Uh, before, be, before we hear from, uh, from uh, our uh, BASI uh, uh, SOC president, President uh, Jameson Tan and uh, President Gilbert Arce of ISPSC, uh, we'd like to spread into the records that we acknowledge and commend the efforts being made by our 
friends from CHED, uh, led by our chairman, uh, Popoy De Vera, uh, we commend him for uh, uh, the reforms that uh, he is uh, implementing and uh, we, we, we acknowledge also his uh, wisdom in ensuring that we are not just after uh, access to uh, higher education, but to make sure that uh, we have quality uh, higher education programs being implemented in the four corners of uh, this country. Um, definitely, we cannot uh, sacrifice the quality of uh, our education. And uh, we also confirm that uh, uh, the office of uh, Chairman Popoy gave us his uh, uh, his uh, his uh, suggestion with regard to compliance with the CHED requirements. And so we would like to hear from uh, uh, President uh, uh, Jameson Tan as to uh, uh, his comments with regard to uh, the chairman's, uh, chairman's uh, statements um, on uh, compliance uh, issue, the uh, quality assurance, uh, for example, yung doctoral programs, faculty issues that was uh, mentioned, uh, degree civil service requirements, etc. May we hear from President uh, James Sundan what we have been uh, doing and uh, where are we so far in this uh, particular uh, issue of uh, compliance? Uh, President uh, James Sontang, you're recognized, sir. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Maraming po salamat, uh, Senator Gawen. Uh, we took note of the inputs, observation of our beloved chair, Chairman Rivera, and we are in the process of uh, complying with the with the deficiency as per uh, the observations or the inputs based on records of the colleagues. We've been, uh, as to our, uh, our uh, faculty with no master degree, at present it is only around 5% who are not uh, master degree holder. As to PhD, uh, we are now in, we have been opening now the PhD in Agriculture and Sciences and the Doctor of Education. Uh, major international management. As to the other areas for the past three years under my administration, we've been doing our best to fully comply so that we are in the, when the time comes that this bill will become into a law, we, we will be just uh, short of the other requirements uh, required by Jen. But uh, we drew inspirations from the other SUCs that when they, are, they apply for the conversion at that time, they are also not yet in full compliance of the CHED requirements, but were able to manage to comply with the, the requirements of the CHED. We, uh, we promised this committee and our beloved chair that we will be doing our best to comply with the requirements of the CHED so that we will be the wisdom of the, the Senate will not be at loss in passing this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair, at maganda kumara po sa lahat. Thank you, President uh, Tan. And uh, we take note of your commitment and your promise. Lagot ka kay Tita Lorna pag hindi mo nagawa yan. <laughs> <laughs> Lagot ka. Uh, we would like to hear from... Um, um, the president of uh, Ilocos Sur Polytechnic State uh, College, President uh, Gilbert Arce. And perhaps we could uh, uh, also elicit your uh, views on the uh, statements made by uh, uh, Chairman Popoy de Vera with regard to uh, the three uh, SOOCs, uh, LOOCs, I mean, Jan uh, po sa Ilocos region. Thank you, sir. You're recognized. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, I hope I can prepare, I, I can share my PowerPoint. More than anything, President Arce, we are uh, expecting you to, to answer and, uh, and uh, react, comment on the uh, statements made by our uh, CHED Chair with regard to uh, the uh, compliance of uh, ISPSC. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, just just few information about the local Polytechnic uh, State College. 
uh, which uh, basically are the reasons why we took the courage of supporting the initiative of our uh, beloved Congresswoman, uh, Congresswoman, Deputy Speaker uh, Christine Singson Mihan. ISPSC, in terms of international linkages, has uh, seven existing international linkages, and there are still about uh, uh, three to five uh, international linkages that the, the college will be inking with our foreign uh, university partners. The existing international linkages that we have include Universitas uh, Pigrimadion. In fact, just a while ago, we had the closing program for our uh, Credit Transfer International. It's a par partnership between uh, Universitas uh, Pigrimadion and uh, uh, MMSU and uh, uh, ISATU, ISPSC, MMSU and uh, uh, ISATU. The other inter uh, foreign partner that the college has is include uh, Polytechnic Negeri Malang, uh, College of Lake uh, County in the United States, Universitas Pendidikan in Indonesia, uh, Universitas Brawijaya, Uni uh, Penica University in Hanoi, Vietnam, and uh, Birmingham City University in the United uh, Kingdom. Uh, as far as uh, research with the uh, our, our uh, esteemed, the chair of the Commission on Higher Education mentioned, as one of the biggest areas in the, the conversion, uh, in the case of the Lucasor Polytechnic State College, for the, uh, this is the, the, the data that we have, for 2019, 37.93% uh, of our faculty are um, uh, researchers, and for 2020, we have 48.82. And for 2019, uh, we have 29 completed researches, 14 presented and one published. For 2020, uh, the data that I have is until December 2020. Uh, completed researches, uh, 30. And uh, um, for utility models that uh, have been approved, we have 41 existing utility or registered uh, utility models, uh, two in uh, registered industrial design, and three applied utility model as of December 2020. Um, 23 and then applied patent uh, invention, we have one. Um, for development projects, just recently, we were able to commercialize uh, one technology that we we produced here in ISPSC, and uh, that is the mango juice uh, technology. It's already in the market, and it was adopted by one of the um, cooperatives in, in the Lucosur. We also have the research program on sustainable production, marketing, and utilization of uh, improved Bulinao chicken in the Locos region, with MMSU as the lead agency, uh, we are part of it and it's already finished. In terms of uh, the accreditation of our programs, five of our programs are to be accredited to level four already. Uh, one is uh, being prepared for phase two, level three. And uh, 11 are already have undergone phase one, level three accreditation. Uh, for level two, we have seven. And level one, we have five. Uh, candidate status, we have nine, and nine new programs are already uh, prepared for um, accreditation. For enrollment data, we have a total of uh, 6,113 um, uh, enrollees of the college. And for our profile, faculty profile, we have four full professors, and uh, um, the rest are Associate professor, assistant professor, we have uh, about 79 instructor, uh, for, uh, faculty members who are still at the instructor level. And uh, the highest educational attainment of our faculty, I think this was also one of the concerns raised by the, uh, the Honorable Chair of uh, CHED. Uh, in the case of ISPSC, <clears throat> we have 56 or 27.58% of our faculty are uh, doctorate degree holders. Uh, 143 are master's degree holders, 70.44%, and just 2%, 1.98 to be exact, 
of our faculty members have finished their academic uh, requirements. <clears throat> so, so that's all that we uh, have for uh, ISPSC, uh, sir, and uh, uh, in in the in the, um, the case of uh, the graduate programs for natin, we have an existing um, collaboration or consortium with the University of Cordilleras. We are offering um, Doctor of Information Technology, and we have submitted to uh, CHED uh, doctoral programs. We are waiting for the, the CHED to visit our uh, worthiness to offer the doctoral programs uh, in uh, ISPSC, sir. So, tungkol po dun sa pagkakaroon ng tatlong uh, higher education institutions ng, ng um, uh, Ilocosur, tama po si Chair De Vera, uh, the NLPSC was once a part of uh, UNP and we are happy that it's now uh, conceived to be part of the new university to be situated in the second district. And I think it's more logical that uh, the two will be merged because they are both situated in the second district of the province of Ilocosur. So that, that's all, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Arce. I can see the hands of uh, Senator uh, Aimi. Senator Aimi, Marcos, you're recognized. Yes, if I may, having heard uh, President Arce and Tan's uh, testimony, and there being no objections from any sector, may I move that uh, the bills regarding the Bulacan State Agricultural University as well as the Ilocosur Philippines Polytechnic University be raised uh, for full discussion to plenary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, Thank I, you. Sec I second the motion of Senator Aimee. Uh, but before that, with the permission of the author, may Please. I be co-author of uh, both bills, being uh, Bulakenya and being part of the Northern Bloc. Yan lang po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We'll be happy to uh, place your name there, uh, Senator Aimee. And there's a motion there, uh, by Senator Marcos, uh, duly seconded by uh, Senator uh, Binay. Is there uh, any objection? Uh, hearing none, the uh, motion is carried. Uh, we are uh, directing the committee secretary to prepare the corresponding committee report subject to the amendment submitted and uh, subject to style in case there are uh, grammatical or typographical errors uh, on uh, Senate Bill number 2106 in relation to uh, House Bill number 8111 and Senate Bill number 2120, taking into consideration House Bill number 8188. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, uh, Congresswoman uh, Singson Mihan and Congresswoman uh, Lorna Silverio. Thank you, Senator Aimee. Thank you, Senator Binay. Uh, we'll now proceed uh, with the uh, uh, Senate Bill number 17, 1744, and at this juncture, uh, before we recognize Chairman Popoy to uh, address some of the issues raised by our colleagues here, uh, may, may we recognize also uh, uh, Tirso Ronquillo, our uh, uh, president of uh, PASUK, uh, Sir Tirso, you recognize? To the uh, CHTB chair, our champion of higher education and Senate, and our friend, Senator Joel Blenueva, esteemed senators and advocates of higher education in the Senate, Senator Pia Caetano, Senator Amy Marcos, and Senator Nancy Binay, uh, Kababayan and Batangas, uh, Chair Popoy and uh, Chad family, honorable sponsors and lawmakers of uh, important bill who will, who, uh, which are being presented today. Uh, concerning higher education and state universities and colleges, other resource persons, uh, good morning. Uh, the Philippine State, uh, Philippine state Universities and Colleges, PASO, uh, consisting of 114 state universities and colleges all over the country, expresses its deepest gratitude to the Senate Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education for their consistent and persistent efforts in introducing some legislative measures that seek to promote and strengthen the higher education of the country. 
Pasok respectfully submits uh, this uh, position to the following legislative measures for deliberations. On Senate Bill Number 1744, an act strengthening the Commission on Higher Education, repealing for the purpose Republic Act Number 7722, otherwise known as the Higher Education Act of 1994, and for other purposes, uh, introduced by uh, the good Senator Joel Villanueva, PASO conveys its strong agreement on the need to strengthen CHED as a central policy and rulemaking body in the delivery of higher education in the country. Uh, for this measure, we already express our uh, support during its deliberation in the uh, lower house uh, in Congress. The proposed Senate bill clearly broadens the powers and function of the Commission and expands its mandate, enabling it to provide strong leadership and direction in the development and reform of higher education in the country to be at par with our international counterparts. Considering the global and regional advancements in higher education that have changed significantly an educational landscape for decades, and considering further the new normal in higher education brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, strengthening CHED is both timely and critical. In particular, PASO finds a legislative support in some of its current initiatives under Section 2, Declaration of Policy, which states that state-supported institutions of higher learning shall gear their programs to national, regional, or local development plans. Finally, all institutions of higher learning shall exemplify through their physical and natural surroundings, the dignity and beauty of, as well as their pride in, the intellectual and scholarly life. The declared policy shall enable SUCs and make them more confident in pursuing the respective visions supportive of a Philippine higher education that is accessible, equitable, and producing locally responsive, innovative, and globally competitive graduates and lifelong learners. PASO humbly appeals on behalf of its more than 80,000 faculty members of this honorable body, if this honorable body will allow, that uh, Section 8 of the proposed measure, powers and function of the Commission, paragraph N, be modified to it, development develop and implement standards and systems on reclassification, promotion, and professional development of personnel in SUCs in coordination with DBM, the Civil Service Commission, and PASO. We deem it important that the development and implementation of standards and systems on reclassification, promotion, and professional development of personnel in SUCs be likewise coordinated with PASO in view of the following uh, reasons. First, the existing standards and systems on reclassification, promotion, and professional development set forth in NBC 461 were originally prepared and crafted by a tripartite body consist of DBM, CHED, and PASOK, which is more inclusive and coordinative. Second, the representation of PASOK shall assure that the benefits and welfare of SUC's personnel are well taken their unique career path clearly defined and substantiated, and their career and professional development properly recognized with reasonable premium for advancement. And third, PASO as the national organization of SUCs is obliged and is in fact expected by the member SUCs and its personnel to ensure their welfare, rights, and privileges are amply articulated and protected. Given the above, PASO strongly supports the immediate Passage of the bill, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President uh, Tirso Ronquillo of Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges. We'll, we'll hear later from uh, Chairman Popoy again uh, after, after, um, after this. Uh, we have with us also from uh, the Coordinating Council of Private Educational Associations, COCOPEA, Attorney Joseph Noel Estrada. Sir, you recognized. Good morning, uh, Honorable Chairman. Uh, Senator Joel Villanueva and the uh, members of the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. And uh, our uh, uh, officials from the Commission on Higher Education headed by Chairman Popoy De Vera and other resource persons. Magandang uh, araw po sa inyo lahat. Um, uh, on behalf of the COCOPEA, I'd like to state uh, and manifest our position. Although, Senator Joel, we submitted our position paper just this morning, a more detailed position 
but I'd like to to highlight certain portions of that written position paper uh, with your permission. Yes, uh, Senator. Senator, um, we we agree um, to the manifestations made uh, earlier on the need to strengthen CHED in the light of the many laws uh, giving additional mandates to the Commission on Higher Education. So, in terms of uh, of strengthening uh, CHED to be able to to meet uh, the volume of work that uh, is falling uh, under its jurisdiction in terms of additional manpower and uh, funding resources, we uh, we fully support that. And uh, in overall, the um, strengthening of CHED in terms of its ability to support higher education institutions in the exercise of its oversight function. And uh, rightfully so, to focus on the uh, and uh, the other area or aspect of its um, of its mandate, which is the developmental function of the Commission on Higher Education. And um, however, um, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, our position on the COCOPEA is that uh, any strengthening of the Commission on Higher Education uh, should uh, should be within the limitations, constitutional limitations, particularly on reasonable regulation and the academic freedom of higher education institutions. Because as mentioned earlier, um, we are concerned about proper coordination with other education agencies like the, DEP, like the DepEd and the TESDA. But we would also like to put into conversation the uh, strengthening of individual private and public higher education institutions because uh, they are given the academic freedom, they are vested with academic freedom by uh, our constitution, no less. Uh, we should be able to strike the balance that in strengthening CHED, we should also be worried about the unintended consequence of weakening of our higher education institutions in the, in the ability to control the rights and freedom subsumed in the academic freedom of higher education institutions. Uh, Your Honor, uh, Senator Chair, uh, I just would like to uh, highlight uh, uh, siguro po lima lang uh, na the concern, concerns no, from uh, those uh, enumerated in our position paper. Number one is on the powers of the Commission under Section 8, no, proceeding from my, my earlier manifestations. Um, clearly withheld from the previous power and function of the Commission is the public hearing requirement whenever CHED sets the minimum standards for programs. So we would like to, uh, uh, to propose uh, for the committee to revisit that. And uh, that is very important, the power to uh, uh, the, the, um, the function of, uh, of conducting public hearings in setting the minimum standards because it will have consequences, particularly on, on the extreme uh, consequence of closure of programs. Programs. And it sets the minimum, so the stakeholders should be heard um, on this one through a public hearing or consultation as already existing under the current uh, CHED law. Um, number two is the expanding of the power of the Commission on Higher Education in setting minimum standards to include quality assurance standards and quality assurance um, institutions. Um, in short, yung pong mga ating uh, accrediting bodies. While we agree that the, that the Commission should have, uh, uh, to a certain extent, an oversight function over accrediting bodies, or private accrediting bodies, uh, we believe that they should not be under the same regulatory powers and supervision powers, just like any other higher education institution, because they're not degree granting, they're not uh, educational institutions, and uh, when we talk about accreditation, this is voluntary. It talks about standards which are higher than the minimum standards set by the government. And there is no limit in pursuing quality assurance. Um, there is no minimum standards in terms of quality assurance in a sense. Because after, after educational institutions have complied with the minimum standards of the government through CHED, they are now free to adopt standards that are higher than the uh, standards set or criteria set by our government institutions. So we hope that we can maintain that, uh, 
that uh, independence of accrediting bodies, because that is the very essence of accreditation, to pursue higher standards than that provided by CHED and uh, other government uh, regulatory bodies. Number three, uh, Honorable Senator, is the um, uh, quasi-judicial functions, as uh, specifically now uh, stated in, uh, in the uh, bill to be the new CHED law. Uh, this quasi-judicial power is not provided in the current Republic Act 7722. And uh, while it is uh, built in, in any government administrative body, the quasi-legislative or the rulemaking and the quasi-judicial, which is to adjudicate, to ensure that its regulations are followed, the CHED remains to be a commission that is not a quasi-judicial body, which uh, does not exercise adjudicatory functions, uh, as opposed to, like, for example, the NLRC that uh, hears and decides and uh, um, receives evidence, awards damages. Uh, this is not the um, function of the Commission on Higher Education. Again, consistent with the reasonable supervision and regulation and academic freedom mandated by our constitution so we um, we also have some uh, uh, proposals on this um, to be uh, to be clarified no? so that uh, the ched will not uh, commit overreach of its functions although admittedly it has no? and uh, we support that uh, by adding additional manpower in the regions the current function of ched may be uh, uh, may be performed better but uh, changing the entire structure and context altogether by making uh, shed a quasi-judicial body. Uh, that is where our reservation on the part of the Cocopea lies. Now, um, next for number four is the provision on Section 8K on the immunity from court injunctions. The, uh, the uh, bill provides that um, the any order of CHED cannot be stalled by an injunction issued by a court. This is uh, now lo no longer a remedy available to uh, to higher education institutions. With all due respect, uh, Your Honor, matters of judicial procedure is uh, are vested vested in the judiciary as provided in our constitution, and not with the legislature. In fact, recent jurisprudence states that um, the uh, power of Congress to repeal, alter, or supplement rules concerning pleadings, practice, and procedure are no longer um, within the uh, uh, legislature's authority uh, in the case of uh, of uh, Bamar Vemko versus Cabato Cortez. Um, and then lastly, number five for uh, Senator is on Section 8R. This was also mentioned by Senator Aimee earlier on uh, conciliation and mediation of academic issues with students. Again, we uh, think that this is not consistent with reasonable supervision and regulation of educational institutions, and also the recognition of, of um, academic uh, determination or matters of, uh, of uh, academics should be left to the determination of the educational institutions. In fact, the Supreme Court in the case of landmark case of Garcia versus Faculty uh, commit, Admission Committee the Supreme Court uh, rationalized this uh, this principle in saying that the courts simply do not have the competence nor inclination to constitute themselves as admission committees of universities and institutions of higher learning and to substitute their judgment for that of the regularly constituted admission committees of educational institutions. Were the courts to do so, they would conceivably be swamped with petitions for admission for thousands refused admission every year, and next, the thousands who flunked and were dropped would also be petitioning the courts for a judicial review of their grades. Along the same uh, line uh, of reasoning, uh, Senator, it would be a problem for the Commission if it will start now assuming functions on reviewing student complaints on matters that are clearly purely academic, like grades and uh, violation of school policies. With 6 million students in the private education sector, with uh, 
almost 2 million students in higher ed with the 2,000, almost 2,000 higher education institutions in the country, there will be a problem for CHED to assume this function. But uh, again, legally, this will also be, uh, will, will be, will run contrary to the principle of reasonable supervision and regulation. And in terms of academic freedom of, of uh, higher education institutions in determining who shall be admitted to study in the educational institutions. We, again, we submitted a copy of this position paper to the committee uh, um, earlier this morning. And uh, we will also submit the proposed uh, wordings based on the discussion uh, this morning, Senator. Again, maraming salamat po for including us as, resource, as part of the resource persons this morning in order to contribute to the deliberation of Senate Bill 1744. Again, we are here to help strengthen the bill and make sure that it is within the limitations as provided by our constitution. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Joseph Noel Estrada of uh, Cocopeya. We take note of your uh, uh, manifestation and uh, statements. I confirm that we receive your position uh, paper. I have it here with me and uh, uh, we are listening attentively from uh, your comments on Section 8 about uh, public hearing, the uh, the uh, uh, immunity from a court injunctions, the uh, conciliation and mediation issue, the quasi-judicial powers of the uh, commission, and the, uh, the last one. Uh, Oh, yun yun, yung, yun yung mga, yung bilanggit niyo hong lima. So thank you for that. Uh, I'm sure si Chairman Popoy would, would, would like to comment uh, uh, later. But uh, one last uh, uh, resource person we'd like to recognize from uh, ALCU, Association of Local Colleges and Universities, Dr. Rene Colocar. Uh, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, to the honorable members, of this uh, committee headed by Senator uh, Villanueva uh, to our Congress uh, men, uh, to other resources speakers, uh, of course, to the chairman of the commission, Chairman Popoy uh, Rivera, maganda umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, for and on behalf of the Association of Local Colleges and Universities, uh, we would like to manifest our strong support to this very timely initiative uh, relative to the revision of the mandates given to the Commission on Higher Education. It's been a long year, no? almost 27 years in existence. Uh, and we, we are all here now no? making some vital and relevant uh, relative to the mandates given to Commission on Higher, uh, uh, higher Education. Uh, on the part of ALCU, uh, under Section 8, no, one of the uh, articles mentioned here, uh, under uh, uh, Section 8, letter G, uh, it says that set minimum quality assurance standards and guidelines for programs and institutions, as well as governance framework for higher education institutions, including local universities and colleges, and accrediting agencies as recommended by panels of experts in the field and enforce the same. While they're trying to extend uh, this particular section among local colleges and universities, would like to manifest also that under letter G of the same section, and it says here, develop and implement the standard and system on reclassification, promotion, and professional development of personnel and so. No mention about LOOP. You know? When we talk of assurance and the standard that is being extended to SOOP, uh, to LOOP rather, but in terms of reclassification, professional development, so we would like to manifest that look should be included also. It is true that, you know, when we talk of 
uh, appointment, we are always at the mercy of our respective local uh, government units. But uh, taking into consideration and the value of this particular uh, uh, section, uh, specifically letter N, uh, system of on classification promotion and professional classification should be the same extended or shared to local colleges and universities. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, again, for and behalf of local colleges and universities, we would like to commend the initiative of the commission being uh, uh, headed by Chairman Popoy. This uh, uh, bill is very timely, very beneficial, of course, without prejudice to some further observation, uh, as mentioned by other resource speakers coming from Cocopea, uh, from PASO, and other related allies and agency. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kolokar. Um, sorry, I'd, I'd like to recognize, of course, our uh, representative from the Association of Local Colleges and Universities uh, Commission, the President, Executive Director, Dr. Raimundo Arcega. Sir, you're recognized. Um, thank you so much, um, Senator Villanueva, and to the rest of the members of the committee. Uh, from the Commission on Accreditation for Local Colleges and Universities, we find the proposed Senate Bill 1744 uh, in order and in all its provisions relating to the structure, uh, qualification, positions, and qualifications of the officers, is, and same through with the management and operation. We interpose the object also. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can hear you, Dr. Raymond. Yeah, um, earlier, uh, Mr. Chair, from the Commission on Accreditation for Local Colleges and Universities, uh, we interpose the objection. We find the okay. we find the provisions relating to the structure, officials, uh, qualifications, its functions, and supervisory and regulatory function in order. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Sega. We, we would like to hear, of course, uh, Chairman Popoy, uh, there's a handful of uh, issues thrown uh, in this uh, committee deliberation. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to, re to, 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 uh, to take note of all the, uh, the manifestation and statements uh, made by our colleagues and our resource persons. But uh, we'll give the floor to uh, Chairman Popoy de Vera, sir. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chair, for uh, your leadership in authoring this uh, particular measure. Uh, the uh, House version has already passed the House Committee on Higher and Technical Education and the Committee on uh, Appropriations, and I was told it will be reported out already when session resumes, so we're happy that uh, the bill is moving also in the House. No? I think your explanatory note to the bill uh, more, more than sufficiently justifies why uh, there is a need to strengthen the Commission on Higher Education since its uh, creation in 1994. The Commission, as you had correctly manifested in the Education Committee report, was supposed to be a uh, coordinating body, a policy-making body, a developmental agency. And it had no uh, inherent implementation responsibilities uh, when it was created. But since then, more than 10 uh, major uh, laws passed by Congress have added implementation responsibilities to the Commission including the most important social legislation under the current administration, the Public Act 10931 or the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Law as indicated in your explanatory note. But let me add another law 
the doctor for the Sabayan law that uh, that the president recently signed also gives additional responsibilities to the commission because it requires uh, a national uh, uh, intervention in producing more doctors stating that there should be at least one state university in every region that will produce additional doctors and also ensure a return service agreement so that the graduates will serve uh, in the country. All of these are again additional mandates of the Commission. So let me just uh, run a couple of slides to show uh, what is the real problem on the ground. While uh, there are so many mandates pending with the Commission, we only have 1,129 uh, permanent and, uh, and contractual or job order uh, positions. Out of the 1,129 personnel of CHED in the whole country, the about 50% are plantilla positions and about 50% are job orders and contractuals. If you, you will notice that on the average, in every region, uh, we run between, uh, you know, a little less than 30 and a maximum of about 50 in every region uh, of the country. Uh, if you look at the responsibilities of our regional office, which are our delivering units, for example, in Region 1, uh, the region of uh, Senator uh, uh, Marcos and... Uh, and uh, uh, other national leaders, 37 employees in the region handle oversight and regulation of 80 private universities, 10 public universities, 140,000 scholarships, 255 programs evaluated, and 89 projects processed and monitored. Remember, Mr. Chair, that per existing law, every new degree program to be offered by a private university has to be evaluated by our regional office and approved. And others are evaluated by our central office. But every single degree program to be offered by a private university has to be vetted by our regions and ultimately approved by the Commission and Bank. So you could imagine 80 private universities with various degree programs, from very big universities to small universities. All of these are processed by 37 employees. You, we look at another region in the Visayas, Region 7, 96 private universities, 17 public universities, 146 scholarships, 42 employees running it. 830 programs that have to be vetted because in our requirements, when a private university applies for the opening of a degree program, we initially give them only a two-year authorization, and after two years, we evaluate them again and determine if they will be allowed to offer a complete four-year program. In Region 7, 96 private HEI, 17 public universities, 146,000, etc. If you go to Mindanao as an example, next slide, please. In Region 10, 66 private HEIs, 22 public universities, 133,000 scholarships, 44 employees. In fact, Mr. Chair, it is a miracle that the universal access to quality tertiary education law with what, close to 1.6 million students not paying tuition and miscellaneous fees, 500,000 tertiary education subsidy, 
grantees across more than 1,000 public and private universities and almost 300,000 Tulung Donong scholars are being run through a bureaucracy that is extremely small and located only until the region. That's why in the bill, we provided for a mechanism to create provincial offices because in certain regions like Mimaropa, the education, educational programs in Palawan are being run from the regional office here in the central office. The same with Mindoro and other, uh, other parts of Mimaropa. You could imagine the difficulty being encountered when we have to send uh, our staff and experts to visit the universities and look at their uh, facilities, look at their library, review their faculty, review their curriculum. So what we are doing, Mr. Chair, in this bill is quite simple. Number one, we have consolidated all the additional mandates imposed by Congress on CHED into the mandates of the Commission under uh, Section uh, 8, Powers and Functions of the Commission. So the Powers and Functions of the Commission summarizes the, the previous under the previous uh, uh, Charter of CHED, RA 772 and we added all the additional responsibilities given by Congress, including those dealing with sports, uh, including those with the Philippine Qualification Framework, transnational education, uh, in terms of uh, including local universities and colleges as part of the higher education family, etc. The major addition that we have put in is the issue of uh, giving chaired quasi-judicial powers, which I will ask our executive director to explain a little bit. So by consolidating all the functions under the mandate, we are creating a system that will allow the commission to have the necessary manpower to implement the responsibilities. Mr. Chair, RA 10931 mandated the UNIFAS to implement free higher education. The problem is the UNIFAS is also a coordinating body. Outside of the UNIFAS board and the secretariat, the UNIFAS has no personnel in the regions. So in the end, the UNIFAS, which is an attached agency of CHED, will have to implement free higher education through our regional offices. But if you look at the UNIFAS secretariat now, the UNIFAS secretariat is composed only of 40 personnel. And we added UNIFAS uh, hires in the region, but they are all contract of services. They are all contractuals. So they are the ones who vet, who go through, uh, out of the 500,000 slots for free higher ed, uh, for tertiary education subsidy, those who apply for the 500,000 slots is a little over 1.5 million applications for 500,000 slots. These are all vetted by UNIFAST. So you can see the discrepancy in terms of our capability to implement our uh, our mandates so we 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 uh, are not asking too much we are simply asking that the commission be given the necessary personnel the necessary uh, structure to uh, implement the mandates of congress effectively we are not uh, proposing to become a department. We think the concept of a commission is okay. We are, of, cor of course, asking that we add additional uh, associate commissioners or assistant uh, deputy commissioners. The reason for this, Mr. Chair, is quite simple. 
outside of the five members of the commission, we cannot delegate any more responsibilities downward because the next line that we will have to delegate will be the executive director of CHED and the directors of the offices. And they themselves have tremendous responsibilities because in the executive branch, the chair of the commission also sits in various bodies of the executive branch. I sit on the Dangerous Drugs Board, I sit in the board of TESDA, and a lot of the interagency committees, uh, the chair sits. So the most I can delegate it to are the commissioners, but there is also a point where they have too much interagency responsibilities we hope that we could have deputy commissioners that we can delegate responsibilities, not just to sit in other bodies of government, but also to handle the functions of the commission. Uh, so that is the general that is the general direction of the of the bill, uh, Mr. Chair. We thank uh, uh, the chair of the uh, commission for pushing for it. Uh, Maybe two or three other points. We Before include... you go with, with your other points, uh, Chairman Popo, you know, i just like to spread into the records the glaring need for, for, for this particular measure with regard to uh, human resources um, uh, or, or manpower uh, uh, demand of the commission. You were saying a while ago 50% are contractual job orders, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have been pushing for ending uh, endo in this August chamber. In fact, we were able to pass it in the uh, in, in uh, last last Congress, and the the private sectors were 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 telling us how can we how do you, how do you want us to respond if we look at the public sector, which is the biggest or the uh, uh, biggest violator of uh, ending endo uh, practice. Um, I, I was looking at Unifast a while ago, and you were in, in that particular um, uh, slide. Thirty-six out of forty, or ninety percent, are contractual or uh, job orders, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, just to date, um, how many Chad regional offices are in operation, and do all regions have regional offices, Mr. Chair? We can't hear you. Sorry, Chairman. Uh, we have uh, offices in all the regions, so we have 17 regional offices. Mr. Chair, if... Uh, if and all of them, uh, Mr. Chairman, sorry, all of them are, are located within the region they serve. Is that correct? Uh, no. Uh, our uh, regional office for Mimaropa and Region 4A are in the central office. Oh, is that ideal, Mr. Chair? Well, in, in Mimaropa, it's a little tricky to locate the central office because if you locate it in Mindoro, there is no direct flight between Palawan and Mindoro. The reason why it's in the central office is uh, Palawan is more accessible travel-wise from, yes. uh, from the central office. If you locate it in Palawan, magre-reklamo naman yung mga taga-Mindoro, yung taga, taga Rumblon. So it's a little tricky. The same case with the other island provinces. Uh, it's easier to do it in the central office, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Please uh, proceed uh, with your uh, uh, two, three points uh, that you were mentioning. Thank yeah, you. Mr. Chair, if the national government is serious about not allowing contract and of services and JOs anymore, the operations of the commission will literally stop in many areas. Uh, because yeah, and that's glaring. That's that's the reason why I was spreading into the records this uh, glaring issue and the uh, the importance of this measure to be uh, passed immediately because of this particular uh, uh, challenge. Thank you. Well, the the uh, the uh, uh, other points I'd like to raise, Mr. Chair, is that in section. Uh, in section 15. Management and Administration of the Higher Education Development Trust Fund. We are reiterating the original provision of the CHED law as passed in 7722, 
where the Higher Education Development Fund is managed by the Commission. Because currently, we don't manage it. The funds that are uh, uh, generated by other government agencies go to the DBM, and we just uh, uh, request money from the HEDF. This was the question raised earlier by Senator uh, Marcos, the HEDF. That's why we are not able to solicit donations, for example, uh, into putting it into the fund because the fund is actually a fund being run by the uh, Department of Budget and Management. And we would like to go to the original intention of the CHED law, which is that the commission will be the one uh, running the trust fund and having, a, having an office to this uh, to this effect, no? uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in response to the uh, comments raised by uh, by PASO on uh, section uh, section eight, letter N, develop and implement standards and system of reclassification, promotion, and professional development of personnel. Uh, our position is that personnel management in government is a responsibility of government agencies exclusively. Uh, while we do uh, like to work with PASOK, PASOK is not a government agency. It is a private entity. And therefore, proper accountability for governmental action and the exercise of responsibility must only be with the Civil Service Commission, the DBM, and CHED. This is also the reason why in the special provision of the GAA in 2019, the president put a conditional veto saying that any subsequent promotion in the national government as far as SUCs are concerned will be based on criteria developed by DBM and CHED. But we have no objection, Mr. Chair, with putting a provision there that we must have mandatory consultation with PASOK and, and the local universities and colleges. We like working with them. We don't have a problem with them. So we, uh, we, uh, we propose that the power be really a power of the uh, chair, DBM, and civil service, but a a provision can be inserted to require mandatory consultation with PASO, uh, with ALCO, and even with COCOPEA. Because after all, uh, promotion systems in higher education, the standards being used now uh, all over the world is there is a blurring of lines between public and private universities. So we can also benefit with consultation with COCOPEA. Uh, that would be my response to the uh, to the uh, position taken by uh, PASO. With respect to the position of uh, COCOPEA, Mr. Chair, uh, with respect to uh, the issue of uh, of uh, the provision under the old or the, the existing chair law on eight uh, on eight D, which says set minimum standards for programs and institutions of higher learning recommended by panel of experts in the field and subject to public hearing and enforce the same. We have no objection with the mandatory, uh, mandatory public consultation. We uh, practice it as a matter of fact. And uh, if that is, the, that is the desire of Congress to, put, to, to insert that provision among the bodies of chair, we welcome it uh, in terms of ensuring that public hearing is required in all the policy reforms that the chair is uh, doing. As far as their comment on accreditation is concerned, uh, CHED has no intention of converting itself into an accreditation body. It already has enough work with the mandates of Congress. Our concern with accreditation now, Mr. Chair, is that there are various accreditation agencies or organizations, one for private school, one for SOAPs, one for uh, LOOPs, etc. The concern of CHED is that these accreditation systems 
must be in sync with each other. There must be minimum standards and agreements on quality assurance across all the accredited, accrediting bodies. As of now, that is still a work in progress. So our role as a commission is to make sure that there is a system where there are minimum requirements for quality assurance across accreditation of different types of universities attuned not only to what we require uh, in the Philippines uh, through PQF and the other national laws, but also international uh, uh, standards. Uh, uh, finally, uh, I, uh, Mr. Chair, with respect to the concern of Attorney Estrada that uh, Chair may be interfering into the into the actions of uh, private universities, particularly in the exercise of its quasi-judicial responsibilities, let me put on record that as far as Cocopea is concerned and as far as the pri big private universities are concerned, we have no problem with their self-regulation mechanisms. We've always uh, seen that they are very responsible universities. Unfortunately, Mr. Chair, there are many universities that are not as responsible as those represented by Atone Estrada. And Atone Estrada knows that. No? So there are uh, smaller private universities in the regions and even here in Metro Manila who willfully, who willfully violate you know, what the laws of this country require. I, sat, I give a particular example of a private university here in Metro Manila, currently being investigated by the commission because they are gaming the implementation of RA 10931. They included their faculty members as beneficiaries of the tertiary education subsidy. They got tests from the national government, but did not give the test to their students. And they, uh, they are charging tuition fee for the test, for tuition fee that was never authorized by the commission. Our exercise of quasi-judicial responsibilities are for these types of serious violations. Because there are so many complaints that the national government or the CHED does not act ex expeditiously to act on complaints against universities. In uh, the previous CHED law under Section 8, letter N of RA 7722, it says the CHED shall promulgate such rules and regulations and exercise such other powers and functions as may be necessary to carry, to carry out effectively the purposes and objectives of this act. We put that quasi-judicial responsibility or mandate in pursuit of our intention of responding to the complaints in higher education. But I would ask that uh, the chair recognize our executive director, uh, uh, Executive Director Cindy Haro to explain the details of the uh, quasi-judicial powers of uh, the commission as uh, contained uh, in the act. Uh, sure. I will stop here, Mr. Chair, and answer the questions of the other senators okay. uh, afterwards. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman Popo. Yes, uh, you, may, you, you mentioned... Uh, uh, Chair Executive Director uh, Cindy Haro, uh, ma'am, you're recognized. If you want to add up to uh, what uh, Chairman De Vera just mentioned, especially with the quasi-judicial powers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you. And good morning to all the resource persons also uh, who are our partners in the higher education sector. Um, with respect to the concern of attorney Strada or Cocopea in that sense, um, I think we, we at the onset we have to clarify that the Supreme Court had already mentioned that the CHED does not really have or does not expressly grant to CHED judicial or quasi-judicial power. What we are asking now, uh, Mr. Chair, is um, an exercise of judicial, quasi-judicial 
power so that when when we perform judicial when we can perform our acts in a judicial manner which is essentially of an executive or administrative body and then that we can ascertain the existence of facts hold hearings weigh evidence and draw conclusions as a basis for a, for a decision we would like to um, clarify mr chair that we are not in any way abridging the uh, academic freedom in fact um, the view or the concept of academic freedom has been enshrined in the Constitution, and under Section 17 of this CHED Bill, it emphasizes the academic freedom of higher education institutions. It delineated that no abridgment of academic freedom except for certain um, matters like minimum unit requirements and the general education distribution requirements. These are actually already incorporated uh, under RA 7722. So if we relate it to quasi-judicial power under this shed bill, which is being proposed now, uh, there is no abridgment of academic freedom, Mr. Chair, because the proposed jurisdiction, if you would see the certain areas, which is fraud, um, non-compliance with the minimum requirements, and authorized operation of a school or course. So all the acts or omissions are within the reasonable supervision concepts of uh, higher education institutions since the acts pertain to illegal acts such as fraud, as I mentioned, Mr. Chair, fraud in the application uh, of government permits, failure to comply with the minimum standards, um, which I have mentioned and I would like to emphasize is already uh, established under RA 7722 and as I've mentioned, the unauthorized operation. Um, I would also like to comment, Mr. Chair, with respect respect to uh, the um, comment of uh, Cocopea with respect to mediation. Um, uh, as to the mediation, Mr. Chair, we would we are asserted we are at, um, likewise saying that there is no abridgment of academic freedom because uh, in mediation naman po, there is no actual decision making on the part or there will be no actual decision making on the part of CHED. Um, there, uh, in mediation, of course, uh, um, Attorney Strada also knows this and all the other lawyers. There is a neutral third party and what it envisions is actually for the parties to reconcile, but not to to cast votes or to make a decision. So, Mr. Chair, um, we are saying that uh, the proposed quasi-judicial making powers or functions of uh, the commission, as well as the power to hold mediation are within the concept of reasonable supervision under the Constitution. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, as to the other comments, Pony, Attorney Strada, since we just got the comments or his position paper, I think today, po, of course, we will reply in detail um, our position, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Attorney Estrada would like to uh, immediately uh, uh, comment on these uh, particular issues uh, that, that uh, Coco Pea uh, uh, raised a while ago. Thank you, uh, Attorney Estrada. You're recognized. Thank you, Senator Joel. So just to make some uh, further clarifications, because some of the issues are not really naman, um contrary no, to the position also of Chad. So it, it also needs further clarification. So first of all, yung pong sa the need for additional manpower and the support of Chad, uh, we, we completely support that. No? But uh, in terms of changing the nature of the commission's power, I think that is where uh, we have some uh, reservations. Uh, if I may just uh, be allowed... Uh, Senator, to, to explain further uh, in the words of the um, framers of our constitution in terms of supervision and regulation and academic freedom, it says that under the journal of the 1986 uh, Constitutional Commission, when the constitution speaks of state supervision and regulation, it refers to external governance of educational institutions, not the internal governance, uh, which is reserved to the respective boards of uh, directors or trustees and even regents and administrative officials of both the public and the private higher education institutions. So may mga matters po na we, the commission can decide on, but internal matters should be, uh, uh, should be uh, exercised by the respective boards of these educational institutions. The Supreme Court further clarified that it does not include the right to supervise education institutions in relation to academic freedom 
It does not include the right to manage, dictate, overrule, and prohibit. Therefore, it does not include the right to dominate. So ito pong power na ito, hindi lang po sa private, but also includes the state universities and local colleges and universities. Now, uh, in relation po to um, the, 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 the needed additional manpower, on uh, particularly in the, in the implementation of Republic Act 10931, we recognize that also, uh, yung under po ng, uh, the TS and free higher ed. But, uh, uh, Senator, yung pong uh, UNIFAST is uh, totally separate from the Commission on Higher Education. While Republic Act 10931 provides that the chair of the Commission on Higher Education sits as the ex officio chair of the UNIFAST board, the entire commission is not part of the, the UNIFAST. But uh, of course, we, we thank uh, Chad for extending its, uh, its uh, administrative support to the, to the UNIFAST because of the lack of manpower. But we hope that uh, eventually the direction should be for the total uh, independence of the UNIFAST. Because rightfully so, the mandates are different. One provides for, uh, for subsidy, for assistance. One is focused on, among others, regulation of higher education institutions. If we subject it under the same authority, there may be some, uh, some conflict in terms of mandates. Now, in relation to the quasi-judicial uh, power of CHED, again, we do not have uh, an issue on the quasi-judicial function of CHED. Like all other government agencies, they, they can have, they have the power to ensure that their regulations are followed. And if it is not followed, it has the right to investigate in order to justify, as part of due process, the imposition of sanctions. So, yan po ay built in na kahit hindi po isulat. However, under Section 9 of the uh, Senate Bill 1744, dun po nagkaka-problema yung pong nakalagay na quasi-judicial powers of the Commission, particularly on its exclusive jurisdiction, exclusive and original jurisdiction. In effect, it, it actually dislodges and assumes uh, powers of regular courts, for example, in determining whether is, there is fraud or deceit, uh, among others, no? Kasi yung pong exercise ngayon ng quasi-judicial function is merely, is limited to ensuring that the, uh, that the uh, regulations of CHED are being followed and whether it merits sanctions in cases of violations. But in terms of determining the extent of rights of parties, um, um, giving uh, or granting uh, uh, damages, no? uh, payment of damages, etc., these are all reserved to courts. No, so ito pong section 9, we feel that uh, this is uh, no longer necessary. And so it's most especially that it states exclusive original jurisdiction. And then lastly, po dun sa mediation, although mediation does not provide for a resolution, we all know that mediation is preparatory and an extension of uh, judicial function. In fact, yan po ay kasama sa courts, kasama sa mga um, administrative quasi-judicial bodies, in order for, for expediency kung ma-avoid po yung uh, litigation. But it is in its nature by itself, is an extension of the judicial process. In fact, kahit po sabihin natin na walang decision doon, uh, just by going through that process, hindi po mafa-finalize ang decision ng schools. Again, this is true for both public and private higher education institutions. Assuming, for example, a student complains of a, of a grade or a wrong decision of the school and subjects it to the mediation process of the of the commission gaano po kaya tatagal yung mediation na yun pag-uusap ng parties before before the decision of the school is upheld I, ilan po ang uh, ang uh, sa sa private pa lang po as i mentioned ilang million na po ang uh, estudyante sa higher education institutions in private excluding pa po yung nasa state universities and local colleges imagine how long it will take for the commission to say and and to help resolve no but then when we go back to okay. the concept of academic determination of the school should which should be upheld thank you senator yes. uh thank 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 you attorney stada before i i recognize uh, uh chairman popoy no let me just uh, spread into the records i think it's clear that uh, even the committee would would like to say that definitely we acknowledge the jurisdiction of our courts no when we talk about 
uh, all of this. So just 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 to uh, uh, guide all of us, and uh, we give we give the uh, the floor now to uh, Chairman Popoy De Vera. Chairman Popoy. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh... Kami ni Atty. Estrada, wala na kayong problema. We always work well together. We are very open to, you know, uh, adjusting the language a bit to address the concerns of uh, Cocopea. As I said, we have no problem with, uh, with the, most of the Cocopea members. They are very responsible universities. Our problem is that there are a lot of other universities which are not as responsible. And if you entrust the commission and call the commission to task for not addressing these concerns, you'll have to give us authority to address it. Otherwise, if you don't give us this authority and there are complaints that we are not uh, doing uh, the proper actions against these universities, then we can say, well, Congress, we went to Congress and Congress did not want to give us that power. Ako simply lang sa akin eh, as I said, I won't give the names of the schools already, but there are many schools we are investigating for very, very serious violations. And, uh, and, uh, na lang, hindi sila Cocopea member. I checked with <laughs> Attorney Estrada, they are not Cocopea members. But, no, what, I mean, you expect the Cocopea to, yes. to act very swiftly on this. If we expect Chad to do its yeah. job, then, then we have to empower them to uh, be able to do their job. Okay, um, if we are not made accountable for the violations of the schools and uh, we say, well, you just go to the courts to complain, uh, well, as long as that is the expectation of accountability of the commission, we're perfectly fine not having this power. Thank you, Chairman. No, we only have 20 minutes left because we have another hearing, uh, education hearing. But uh, we'd, we'd like to hear from the DBM because remember... Uh, the concerns of uh, our colleagues, including uh, this representation, Senator Pia made mention about uh, the budgetary requirements of the uh, proposed uh, CHED provincial offices, etc. We have here with us from the Department of Budget and Management, Director Gerald uh, Handa. Uh, Director uh, Gerald, if uh, you, we can uh, hear from you, can you give us uh, your views and uh, your comments in this, on this particular uh, measure? Director Gerald, you're recognized. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Senator Villanueva and Toll. Uh, Is it really you, Direct Director Gerald? You don't have a video. Uh, you don't have... Uh, my apologies, uh, Mr. Please. Senator, because uh, the camera of my laptop is not working, sir. Okay. Sige, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll uh, accept that uh, reasoning. Sige, uh, please proceed, uh, Director Gerald. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Similar to the position of the Department of Budget and Management to the legislative measure under the House of Representatives, uh, we recognize the intent of this measure under your committee, sir, that is being deliberated. And we interpose no objection on the strengthening of the operations of the Commission on Higher Education. However, sir, uh, may I just highlight po the specific comments of the DBM regarding po doon sa certain provisions of the bill which have uh, organization, position classification, and compensation implications. Sir, first on the appointment of three deputy commissioners. So may I just highlight that under the existing setup that, of the CHED, uh, the commission is composed of one chairperson and four commission members. And also the CHED has an ex office of the executive director which is composed of an executive director occupying an SG-29 or Assistant Secretary level item and a Deputy Executive Director item. We deem that the creation of the three additional three Deputy Commissioners is no longer necessary considering that the intended task of this uh, proposed Deputy Commissioners could already be handled by the Commission and Bank itself as well as the agencies, Executive Director and Deputy Executive Director. In addition, we deem that the proposal will lead to the creation of another layer in the organizational hierarchy of the CHED. Sir, on a, a certain section in the bill regarding the entitlement of uh, chairperson and commissioners to honoraria, may I just highlight that under the existing rules and regulations of the DBM, particular, sir, under National Budget Circular 2007-510, 
the chair, vice chair, and members of the collegial bodies who are already receiving salaries and regular allowances as well as other benefits are no longer entitled to honoraria. So modification of the particular section of the bill is recommended, sir. On the creation of the provincial offices, uh, as discussed uh, with our uh, other similar offices in the DBM, the proposed functions of the provincial offices in the CHED are currently being undertaken by the agency's ROs. Instead of creating additional layer or additional, provis additional provincial offices for the commission, we are just recommending the strengthening of the CHED ROs. Um, we recognize the need for we recognize the need of the CHED for additional positions. So, um, consistent with the general provisions under the existing GAA, such as Section 83 and Section 84, 85 of the general provisions, agencies concerned such as the CHED could already undertake institutional strengthening efforts annually. So, in this case, sir, um, the CHED could review its existing organizational structure and staffing pattern. And in case there are additional positions or additional units needed, uh, the CHED could submit a proposal to the DBM for evaluation and approval thereafter. Uh, sir, uh, Mr. Senator, we recognize the need, uh, we recognize the current uh, status of the CHED having uh, numerous job orders and contract of service workers. Consistent with the existing policy of the DBM, we are um, on a case-to-case -case basis acting on uh, the proposals of the different agencies, proposing the conversion of their COS and job order workers into contractual items. We have done this in the in the case of Department of Health, wherein we converted um, 26,000 uh, COS position into contractual items, meaning contractual having the same benefits as regular personnel. And in as well as in the PSWD, DTI, and other government agencies. So, in the case of CHED, uh, if they have, if the CHED will uh, finally submit a proposal to the DBM for the conversion of the CUS and job order into contractual items, then we could uh, act on the request of the Commission on the matter, sir. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, no, Director Gerald. But let me, let me point this out. No, you, you made mention about strengthening of uh, our regional offices of the uh, Commission on Higher uh, Education. Uh, were, were you around when uh, Chair Popoy presented the figures? Did you see the current situation right now? For yes, instance, sir. the I, I mean the, the regional offices. So would you, what what would be your recommendation strengthen ROs by, by 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 i mean how i mean did you see the uh, the situation of unifas where in 90% of our our uh, employees are uh, uh, in contractual and job order uh, status uh, sir with regard to sa regular positions po sa ched currently ched has uh, based on our record po i there are around 675 plantilla positions of which only 537 are filled so this is based on our um, generated uh, data from our system sir this morning so ched has 138 unfilled positions but and the 138 will suffice to cover the entire country actually sir uh, as i mentioned a while ago we are uh, amenable to the strengthening of the ched so in this case sir in case the ched will determine the appropriate additional positions for its regional offices. Then we could uh, act on the matter, sir. And uh, as we are doing with other agencies concerned, sir, uh, we are including the necessary funding requirement under the MPBF, sir, to support the creation of additional positions on the matter, sir. Director Gerald, currently, are you saying that uh, CHED has not applied or... or, or um, um, uh, flag your attention with regard to, uh, for instance, let's be more specific, the, the, the Unifast uh, uh, project wherein you have 90% uh, contractual job order uh, employees? So as regards the Unifast, po, uh, I can check with our officer if we have a pending proposal. But as far as I remember, sir, we do not have any uh, pending proposal po regarding the Unifast for creation of additional positions as well as for the CHED Central Office. Po. 
Okay, Actually, lastly, lastly before before I recognize Chad Chairman uh, Popo, yes, you know, kasi si Senator Pia and I were, were talking about the budgetary uh, requirements of this uh, provincial office. Obviously, you were saying you are not supporting it. Instead, uh, DBM wanted Chad to, uh, to to rather just strengthen their, their regulatory offices. But uh, would, would you give us uh, a more concrete reason as to uh, why, for example, perhaps if you could give us uh, the budgetary requirements of the proposed uh, Ched provincial offices, how much uh, would uh, uh, would would entail uh, in order for us to to come up with the provincial offices? Sir, with regard to your query on the amount that will be needed for the establishment of the PO, sir, sir, as of now we don't have some we do not have some estimates because um, it will uh, aside from having to establish an organizational unit in 81 provinces of the Philippines, uh, it will also entail not only PS but as well as MO and CO. So in our formal uh, um, letter, sir, to your committee, sir, we will include this estimate, sir, so to guide your officer on this matter. Please, please, and uh, how much would be the budget for uh, perhaps uh, include also uh, yung, yung budget for uh, maintenance and other operating expenses? Yes, yes, sir. We will include uh, in our um, doc, uh, in our letter to the Senate this matter, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll we'll give the floor to uh, Chairman Popo. I think he wanted to uh, immediately uh, comment on the manifestations made by uh, our friends from DBM. Chairman Popo, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, DBM made mention that there are vacant positions that have not been filled up by chair. One major reason, Mr. Chair, is as I said earlier, the requirements of CHED are continuously changing because of additional mandates coming from Congress. For example, the, one of the laws passed by Congress is the transnational education law. You need highly technical individuals to do it. You cannot rely on the regular plantilla positions that are available. Because transnational education is, uh, uh, requires expertise in internationalization, in working with universities, etc. So the new mandates that we are trying to comply with, we have to resort to contractual personnel. Because the existing positions that are still open cannot, does not have or we cannot hire the people to do very specialized responsibilities being given to us by new laws. Pati yung doktor sa bayan. Uh, that, that's one reason. So, uh, I don't think there is any agency of government that, was ha that has no uh, vacant positions. All agencies of government have some positions that are vacant because the positions do not comply with what we need. Ayaw naman na mag-hire, tapos wala namang gagawin yung tao. But we are ready to sit down if this bill is passed into law. We're ready to sit down with DBM to reclassify the positions to what is really needed, particularly implementation responsibilities uh, of the commission. Uh, number two, Mr. Chair, with respect to the provincial offices, we're not, we don't, we don't, I don't think we need to have a provincial office in all the 81 provinces. We need provincial offices because we are an archipelago. And there are island provinces that are very difficult to reach. And the responsibility of CHED staff is not just to go there and do administrative work. We actually have to go to the public, private universities to check on their facilities, to monitor compliance, to get reports, etc., and to deal with student applicants for scholarships particularly uh, have particularly complaints with their universities so there are there are island provinces that are really difficult to reach particularly in Nipadopa, particularly in region 4a and even in areas for example in Bicol because the way Bicol is uh, archipelagically designed you know wherever you put the regional office there there will be provinces that will take you so long to travel uh, the 
province of President Rene Colocar, Mindoro. Yes. Uh, it's very difficult because it's not only an island. Uh, there is a big mountain between Mindoro Oriental and Mindoro Occidental. The same way with the Cordilleras. You know, we have to accept that we are an archipelago and there are areas where the regional office is staffed really would take a very long time to go down at the ground level. So uh, we hope that in this bill, uh, Chen be given the responsibility to determine what uh, provinces should have a uh, provincial office, depending on the geographic location, access uh, to, to uh, you know, the uh, students, the schools, etc. But there is no plan to have 81 provincial offices. There are regions where the regional office can suffice to handle the, the uh, needs. No? The other thing, Mr. Chair, is that there are several uh, led, uh, proposed bills already in Congress passed by the House of Representatives creating provincial offices. We do not want a situation where uh, legislation on provincial offices is approved without rationalizing where they should be. Uh, that that would be the uh, that would be my response. Uh, uh, and finally, with respect to Unifast, the organizational plantilla that was given to Unifast was when it was created as a coordinating body. It is now an implementing body. And therefore, the uh, positions that are there are not really what is needed for their operations. What we need in Unifast are people with very good IT background, people with very good communication background, monitoring and evaluation. That those are not responsibilities of the personnel in Unifast when, it was, when the plantilla was put together. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Chairman Popo. You know, um, sige, uh, we, we give the floor to. Siguro very quick lang po kay uh, unahin natin si President Tirso and then uh, President Rene. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is uh, in response to the comment of Chair Popo that PASOK is a uh, private uh, association. Uh, while we recognize that one thing unique in PASOK is that this is an association of state universities or government universities. That's why we feel that PASOK should be consulted in all uh, concerns that affect our sector. Uh, let it be recalled, Mr. Chair, that there are a number of bills passed by this chamber and enacted into law, specifically those affecting issues that consider the inclusion of PASOK in a more coordinative intent within the wisdom of inclusiveness. Uh, like, for example, the Land Use Development and Infrastructure Plan or Republic Act 11396, which uh, mandates CHED to coordinate with PASO, DPWH, and other government agencies. And that we, we are happy to, to see. Also, the Republic Act 10931 that considered PASO as member of the UNIPAS board. Also, that is well, uh, well recognized. Along this line, Mr. Chair, the kind offer of the provision in the proposed measure by the uh, Chair Chair on the inclusion of mandatory consultation or coordination with PASOK on matters that concerns SUC stakeholders is very well appreciated and will gladly be accepted. Thank you, Chair Popoy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Senator, Senator Joel. Thank you. Yes, uh, we, we recognize uh, Sir Rene, please. Uh, th Dr. Thank Rene. you. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, DBM mentioned that instead of having and establishing provincial uh, CHED offices, so it would be better to have some sort of modification in terms of regional, you know, by means of strengthening the staff. So to our mind, that would not really suffice, no, some of the degree of the administrative function, wherein uh, most of the uh, uh, actions are badly needed by the respective uh, uh, institution located in the provinces. As mentioned by the Honorable Chair, uh, Chairman Popoy, like in the case of Mimaropa, no, 
uh, in times of different intricacies like not only COVID, typhoon, flood, earthquake, it is uh, difficult on the part of the higher education institution to go to Manila just to transact business. So the proposal of CHED for having some provincial uh, offices could really strengthen uh, the management and supervision of all HEIs located in the provinces. And with that, we strongly support this position to establish such uh, provincial offices uh, under the supervision of Commission on Higher Education. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rene. No, uh, sorry, uh, we're, we're running out of time. But Chairman Popoy, yung nirace po natin kanina dito in my opening statement together with uh, some of our colleagues here, yung uh, issue on how we will make sure that uh, we'll be able to strengthen the coordination of uh, educational institutions when we are uh, 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 going to pass this this measure then as mentioned earlier tesda is uh, asking uh, to be converted into a department i wonder what how dbm would also react on that uh, particular proposal but uh, let me just uh, hear your thoughts on this uh, chairman popoy yeah thank you mr chair i think uh, dbm has the least opposition to chair because we don't want to become a department, we just want to <laughs> But they don't want you to establish provincial offices, uh, Chairman Popoy. Yeah. No, we, we just want to be given the necessary organizational and manpower complement to implement what we are being held accountable for. That is really the intention of the bill. In terms of coordination, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, maybe that is what we can talk about uh, in the in the congressional oversight concept that uh, that I which will happen in five minutes, your honors, <laughs> which you are proposing. But suffice to say, in the major activities dealing with higher education institutions, we do have coordination. For example. In the curriculum development of CHED, we are reconstituting all technical panels. So government, academe, and industry are equally represented in our technical panels, which go through the curriculum and which evaluate universities. And the representative of government agencies, we ask it from the secretaries to, to, to give the names. There is also a representative of the PRC in every technical panel. So when you talk about curriculum related to uh, education, I have written the Secretary of Education to give names so that they can be in the panel because one major area where we need the cooperation of other government agencies and the industry is in curriculum reform because that is the core of human resource uh, development. So we have changed some of the rules of the commission already with respect to making sure the other departments have a say in manpower development. So when it goes to you know the curriculum and agriculture, fisheries, we ask the Department of Agriculture to give uh, their representatives. When it goes to environment, we ask the DNR to give their, in, to give their, their uh, uh, people to sit there in our panels so that uh, we can make sure that uh, manpower development in this country includes other agencies in the determination of where our scholarship programs will go, particularly merit scholarships. The degree programs that should be prioritized is a joint product of DOLE, DTI, and CHED. We created an interagency body to determine what should be the priority programs where government should give scholarships, particularly merit scholarships? So, hindi na lang chat ang nag-decide ng priority areas. It is based on supply and demand trends from the DOLE, you know, DTI, and DOST. So, and under, under the chat now, uh, we have created a lot of interagency linkages on the key programs of the, uh, of the commission, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Popoy. And uh, I think Senator Nancy Binay would like to, I, I, I saw her kanina raising her hand. But anyway, um, yes, Senator Nancy, please, you're recognized. 
Essentially, I had to step out kanina. Um, natanong na mo ba sa Ched kung may ID na, ID na sila kung ano yung magiging additional personnel? Additional personnel? Uh, Chairman Popoy, uh, what are we looking at? Yung ideal and the uh, practical way of uh, uh, doing this? But Mr. Chair, I think that would be a good two-step process. The first uh, process would be to convert our contractual items into permanent items. Kasi 50-50 kami ngayon eh. Ang hirap, ang hirap talaga magpatakbo ng agency na anytime pwede mag-resign yung mga tao kasi wala silang job security. Maging permanent lang yung uh, kahit na 80-90% lang ng personnel o mas maganda siguro lahat ng contractuals ma-convert into permanent, malaking bagay na yan because we can rely on them to do a good job. The second step is to identify what are the new personnel needed because of the additional responsibilities. For example, Congress passed the trans, uh, you know, the trans, uh, transnational education law. In the law, there is a specific provision on what kind of personnel is needed. We have submitted our proposal to DBM pero hindi pa inapproval. So we don't have the staff to implement the law. So merong mga, mga plantilla positions needed for the new mandates of Congress that need to be approved. And then pangatlo, yung provincial offices. So I think it's a three-step process. The first one is uh, convert the contractuals into permanent. The second is identify the new items needed because of new laws passed by Congress. And number three, uh, personnel needed because of the provincial office. Uh, and kasama na dyan, Mr. Chair, yung sa UNIFAST. Kasi yung UNIFAST is being implemented to the CHED regional offices. They also need the permanent positions. Lahat ng UNIFAST personnel sa regional office namin are contractuals now. So that three that three step process will suffice, Mr. Chair. Right. Okay. Uh, Chair Popay, more or less, ilan hutong contractual employees na sa na nagusto yung going permanent. We have one thousand two hundred plus uh, personnel now. The division of permanent to contractual is about fifty fifty. So half of our personnel are contractual, half are permanent. Uh, but, but so far, um, Chair Papay, wala pa kayong ginagawang pag-aaral pagdating dun sa um, second process yung so for the new personnel. Ay, uh, yung additional functions, meron na kaming, may mga contractual na kaming hinire para ma-implement yung mga batas na pinasa ng Congress. Pero these are bare minimum project hired lahat sila. For example, in sports, we have been mandated to collect all the data on sports activities, etc. of all the universities so we can make policies. Ang hinayo namin ay parang tatlong tao lang. We are really on a very, very bare minimum to put this together. Anyway, we are uh, working with uh, the Philippine Sports Commission, etc. Nakikishare, share kami ng responsibilities. Doon sa transnational, I think nag-hire kami ng dalawang bago very bare ito, but we can easily we can easily enumerate the positions that are needed for the new mandate. Yung doktor para sa bayan, no, wala pa kami bagong personnel yan. We are using existing personnel to implement the doktor para sa bayan requirements of uh, Congress. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Maganda na may ang pag uh, pwede ng umpisahan at gawa ng pag-aaral. Kung ilan talaga yung magiging... Uh, Additional personnel uh, is very much a problem dahil dito sa, sa pandemic. And um, di ba katulad na ano na sa pandemic for a new department, pero hindi mo natin alam, baka naman ho yung personal requirement nyo, eh, parang nag-create na rin tayo ng bagong department. So, so, uh, Baka maganda ngayon pa lang, eh, pag, pag, pag tignan na natin at pag-aaralan na natin, kung magkano ba talaga yung magagastos natin uh, with this uh, with this bill. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Nancy. Yes, Mr. Chairman Popoy. 
Yeah, can we can turn off uh, your your monitor kung hindi nagsasalita uh, sirs and moms. Thank you. Yeah, we, can submit, okay, yes. we can submit to the Senate our uh, requested plantilla positions, Mr. Chair. We we can easily put that together. Thank you. Yes, that that would be great, uh, Chairman Popoy. And Chairman Popoy, uh, for ano of time, uh, lack of time, siguro kahit pa submit na lang yung mga binanggit ng ating mga kasama. For example, si Senator Imi was asking about the uh, guidelines on the uh, reasonable increase in tuition fees. Tapos yung overall policy on the admission of foreigners, yung conduct of mediation between uh, HEIs and student and academic issues. Um, pati yung update on the status of uh, higher education trust fund amidst the uh, pandemic, uh, yung mga hinihingi ng ating mga kasama. One last thing, uh, Chairman Popoy, kasi we have been uh, uh, getting barrage of uh, um, um, complaints and uh, uh, issues uh, besetting the K-12 uh, program. May, may we know the status of uh, the review of the K-12 program? Uh, curriculum and the transition to higher education. If I'm not mistaken, meron po kayong ginawang uh, review. Perhaps if you could give us yung uh, uh, CHED's uh, preliminary uh, inputs on the uh, involve, improvement of, of, of the K-12 uh, uh, program to ensure, sir, that uh, a smoother transition of K-12 uh, graduates to higher education and yung laging uh, naririnig natin sa mga magulang na uh, we they wanted to make sure na ma-avoid natin yung repeating the same subjects already taken up under the K-12 uh, uh, curriculum. Kasi hanggang ngayon, may mga ganun pong complaints na nare-receive tayo and uh, uh, they're asking what we can do about it. Uh, Chairman Popoy? Uh, Mr. Chair, wala kami yung comprehensive review ng K-12. What, what we have is that some universities have made assessment studies on the readiness of the K-12 uh, graduates for their curriculum programs. May mga ganyan ginawa na yung ibang school. Yung incoming na K-12, sinicheck nila yung readiness, saan nahihirapan ng mga subject, saan yung mga kulang na competencies. Uh, some schools have that already, both public and private. I think Cocopeya also, some Cocopeya members have also started to look into this. Yun, meron na kaming konting, uh, konting data, Mr. Chair. But we would, we, would defer to, we would defer to the DepEd to do the evaluation of K-12 kasi hindi, it's, not, it's not under the jurisdiction of the commission. Yes, yes I you, agree, uh, Chairman, but uh, I, I'm sure this is not the first time that you have heard about this. Na yung, yung, yung mga magulang sinasabi nila, uh, yung tinake up nil, ng anak nila doon sa K-12, yun din yung general subjects that they're taking up doon sa higher education institution. So, again, uh, we just wanted to make sure na we are looking into this and uh, uh, please give us ammunitions on how we could be of help in any way we can. Dahil tayo naman dito sa Senado, we, 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 want, we wanted to... Uh, to make sure that this is being addressed. Si uh, Attorney Estrada, kung may gustong idagdag, uh, please feel free to, to butt in, sir. Senator, opo, may mga iba, iba po kasing mga evaluation and assessment ng K-12. I think if we can uh, if we can come up with one, an external evaluation of the K-12, but only in the implementation of the K-12, but also those who took up the, the academic strand na pursuing higher education. And uh, Senator, ang isa pa po is uh, yung uh, I think next year pa po yung ating first batch ng talagang nagtapos ng buong 12 years. Yung nagkinder at matatapos po ng senior high. Although we had in the past yung first batch ng uh, gumraduate ng senior high, they just took the new grades 11 and 12. Pero hindi pa po sila, hindi po sila nagsimula from the new kinder. So I think it's also good to compare yung mga initial assessments with the yung complete product yung na po. Yung complete ng 12-year uh, program. Yes, Senator. Tapos po, yes, Senator, yung pong uh, inihingi nyo, ang alam ko po yung sa PIDS, meron po silang uh, ginawang study. Yung pong uh, hinihingi nyo po kay, kay uh, Chair Popoy, okay. meron po yung PIDS, meron po sila nun. Thank you. Thank okay. you for that. Um, any other comments? Uh, Thoughts, Chairman Popoy, Senator Nancy? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I, I guess, siguro, 
Can we just get an update dun sa kung kailan ba nila nakikita tong face-to-face classes for our higher education? Uh, alam, natin, meron na, alam natin meron na hong yes. limited face-to-face for mga medical yeah. students. Oh, perhaps yung update, uh, Chairman Popoy, uh, okay. sige please. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. As of today, there are 93 higher education institutions that have been inspected and authorized to have uh, face-to-face for medicine and ad- other allied health sciences. Uh, the problem is, hindi sila sabay-sabay magsisimula. May mga nagsimula na, may mga nagsimula mid-sem, may yung, meron yung iba sa opening pa lang ng school year magsisimula face-to-face. So not all the 93 are doing it now. But for those that started early, like UP College of Medicine, ang, uh, Fatima, there is already preliminary data that has come out. In the UP College of Medicine, since they had face-to-face, there is zero infection. The same with Fatima. Uh, and UST. Have, yes, and UST. So we're getting now data. Kailangan ko sabihin UST, Senator Nancy. Thank you. <laughs> so, so we're now getting data. And if it shows that they are safe, then uh, we can go to the president and ask that it be expanded to other degree programs. What we are doing in the meantime is we are readying those degree programs already for face-to-face. Like they are listing what are the subjects really that need hands-on. So meron na silang mga guidelines specific to the degree programs that they are finalizing. So in case this is allowed by the president, they can start immediately once they are inspected. So we're talking about uh, engineering, information technology, industrial tech, uh, tourism, uh, vet med. Uh, nagsisimula na silang, uh, ang nagsusulat, ng, uh, namimili ng mga subjects, yung mga deans, saka yung mga technical panel ng CHED. Pinapa-fast track po na submit nila para ma- ma-approve na ng Commission and Bank. And if the data on the ground shows it is safe, then we can go to the president and ask for an expansion. Mr. Chairman, de, kaya ko yes. din mo ito na itanong eh, for personal reasons kasi alam niyo yung panganay kong anak. Eh, ano daw, mag-extend daw siya sa pagiging college kasi pwede siyang graduate na hindi siya naka-experience ng face-to-face classes. Kaya ngayon pa lang, iniisip na niya na kung kailangan daw niya mag-shift to another course para magdag- madagdagan yung pagiging college student niya, eh, mukha kinoconsider na. Uh, siguro, uh, Chairman, maganda din malaman, ano ba yung nakikit? Kasi alam ko, like, may mga universities, nag offer na sila ng uh, parang vaccination program sa mga estudyante nila. Isa din ba ito din sa mga pinag-aaralan nyo para ma- talagang maumpisahan na itong face-to-face for our college students? Ang nangyari, uh, Madam Senator, is for the first batch, yung medical and allied health, mas madali silang nabakunahan both the students and the faculty because they were classified as essential health workers. So napunta na sila sa A1. I asked DOH to issue a memo that they are A1. So there's another level of, uh, you know, reducing the risk by getting them vaccinated. Yes. Now, we have been able to push in the IATF that all educational uh, frontliners be reclassified as A4. So they I are have now... been pushing for that, Chairman Popoy. In fact, they already agree that they are part of the A4 priority list. Medyo, yes. mat- medyo matindi din na away sa IATF yan when I raised that. Uh, kasi sabi ko, Bakit hindi classified yung education sector as essential economic uh, workers? Because they are, you know, they, they, the higher education is a very big sector. No? So nasa, yeah. nasa A4 na sila, so ang mga teachers mababakunahan na. So ang problema yes. na lang natin yung mga estudyante. Technically, the students should be vaccinated because they're, they're part of the 18-year-old and above, uh, you know, uh, group. Except uh, we are at the mercy of uh, how much vaccine is being delivered in the country. So what I was pushing, and I hope I can get the support of our legislators, is kung babakunahan ng mga estudyante, unahin muna yung maglilimited face-to-face. Kahit na sila muna yes. unahin bakunahan para makapag-face-to-face na sila. And then as we expand to other degree programs, at least mas konti yung kailangan bakunahan. Yun muna mag- be face-to-face na estudyante ang bakunahan. 
if, if that policy can be adopted by the IATF, I think we can put another level of uh, safety for our face-to-face. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Popoy. I'm sorry, uh, distinguished uh, colleagues and uh, resource persons. The uh, Committee on Basic uh, Education has started and uh, Chairman Sherwin Gachaya is texting me where, where nasaan na daw yung mga taga higher education. But uh, again, uh, thank you, Chairman Popoy. Thank you, Chair, uh, I mean, uh, Senator Nancy. We are extremely grateful uh, for the fruitful and eventful discussion of the measures uh, we have on hand, namely the Revised Higher Education Act or the Revised CHED Charter, as well as the uh, conversion of Bulacan Agricultural State University and the Ilocos Sur Polytechnic State College into universities. Salamat po muli sa ating mga resource persons, mga kasamahan dito sa Senado, at sa ating mga HEI organizations sa pagbibigay po ninyo ng oras at panahon at aktibong partisipasyon na ngayong umaga, ngayong tanghali na po. Sa ating mga SUCs, we will work uh, with the Bulacan Agricultural State University and Ilocos Sur Polytechnic State College for their conversion into state universities to ensure that we are, that they are, uh, or will be compliant with the uh, requirement, requirements of CHED to qualify as a university. Mga kaasa po kayo na ang ating opisina ay uh, uh, nandito upang uh, matupad ang inyong hangarin na maging ganap na universidad. For our CHED charter revisions, um, rest assured that the Committee on Higher and uh, Technical and Vocational Education and uh, this representation uh, took note of all the concerns raised during the hearing and will uh, continue to study the measures uh, closely. We are uh, 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 giving you our commitment that we are open and uh, uh, ready to hear your positions uh, sa lahat po ng mga stakeholders. And, uh, you know, we look forward to discussing uh, the following issues, uh, perhaps kung mag TWG na tayo. Of course, we will uh, consult with the members of the committee. Uh, siguro yung uh, kaninang binanggit natin, guidelines for the reasonable increase in tuition fees, admission of foreign students, proposed power of CHED to conduct mediation between HEIs and students on academic issues, and what constitutes academic issues. Um, of course, yung possible sanctions to be imposed to airing uh, board members of SUCs, the proposed immunity from suit of CHED orders, the power of CHED over accrediting institutions, the proposed quasi-judicial power of CHED, the proposed expanded CHED a trust fund, the need for a public hearing and consultations with all HEIs on CHED actions that may affect them, and the, the budget implications, of course, which is very important. Uh, with this uh, proposed uh, charter, particularly the creation of uh, provincial offices, as made mentioned by our chair, uh, Chairman Popo, hindi naman intention to create uh, a provincial offices in all the provinces uh, of the country. So muli uh, sa inyo pong lahat, uh, maraming maraming salamat po for your time. May God bless us all at uh, uh, this uh, committee uh, hearing is hereby adjourned. Thank you. Thank you very much.